can either stand with us or with the child pornographers. I lost my temper and used language that was most decidedly unparliamentary, and for that I unreservedly apologize. Remarkable. A little while ago, as you just saw, we saw Minister Vic Taves accusing opposition members of being little better than child pornographers as they voted against a government crime bill. That was low, and it was stupid. On the other occasion, we heard Canada's most famous MP, Justin Trudeau, shouting out across the parliamentary aisle that Peter Kent was a piece of excrement. Mr. Trudeau used a more basic term. It was street or locker room language being introduced where such language has no place. The people's house. Well, those are merely a couple of examples out of a trash can load of parliamentarians abusing the House, their MP status, abandoning good manners and going vulgar in public and knowingly because it gets headlines, puts them on the blogs and jollifies their hardline followers. But this week, the already degraded exchange of political commentary were utterly outraged by a piece of verbal slumming and extreme nastiness Remarkable even in an age of tasteless expression and slop bucket partisan rhetoric. Mr. Rob Anders, conservative MP whose reckless mouth is hardly news, he once wanted Nelson Mandela to be labeled <coughs> a terrorist. Well, Mr. Anders went to truly dark territory, both in the viciousness of his insinuation and the reckless brutality of the thought behind it. He actually accused the current leader of the opposition, Tom Mulcair, of hastening Jack Layton's death for Mulcair's advantage. Where do you start with such a statement? What vile winds were swirling in that otherwise empty head of the person who made it? Naturally, people universally condemned Anders for the statement, and such also is the cycle of news these days that he then, you know, apologized for it. And it's all back to normal. Well, with a statement that crude and that vile, I'm not at all sure it should be back to normal. You don't casually insinuate that someone worked for a sort of gradual homicide of his leader, that Mr. Mulcair hurried Mr. Layton's death, and then mutter one of those rote pseudo-apologies. Mr. Rob Anders has walked past every line of decency, good sense, and fairness with his insinuations. He really, without pressure from others or the Prime Minister, just under the prompting of his own scruples, should think about whether he, after such a fundamental outrage, should resign. Not at all incidentally, Olivia Chow took the finest and most dignified pass on this ugly moment. She chose not to amplify it, and from an infinitely higher standard of conduct, more or less, let it pass. In other words, left it all where it began, with Mr. Andrews. His words and that kind of thought, coming from a member of parliament, in an ideal world, would see him abject himself in permanent apology, leave his own caucus as being unworthy of it, and self-eject himself from the commons, in an ideal world. But this is parliament, and he's Rob Andrews. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.